morning, y'all. Good evening. It's your girl, Claudia Jordan. We are back with TGIF. Of course, we're here to break down the biggest headlines in social media and spill all the tea. So sit back, relax, and get ready for all of this. What's up, Al Reynolds? And what's up, Funky Dineva? And why are we all matching tonight? You know what? I don't know what's going on, but you know, when we match, do, do we have good shows when we match or just all right shows when we match? I don't think we ever have just all right shows. I think we're always epic. <laughs> okay, well... I'm gonna go ahead and say, y'all. Okay, everybody's giving cream and winter whites. You know what? You, you know, you know why I went and got mine. So in Miami, I had to wake up this morning and do some blood work this morning, and it had to be done between the hours of seven and nine, and I could only get a seven twenty appointment. So it was early. It was fifty nine degrees in Miami when I left my house, and when mm -hmm. I left out of the lab place, it was sixty six degrees, and we maintained like the low seventies today. So it's winter time in Miami. It's activated like my seasonal mental shift and I was like I gotta find a sweater to put on <laughs> you mean like, fall I mean fall well, fall well you see that 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 goes to show how non-season related I am <laughs> I said this is winter for us Miami <laughs> I know right and Al you're dressed up tonight did you have something else to do today Oh, you know I have three jobs so <laughs> are you are you teaching today uh, no, I have office hours today. I wasn't teaching today, but I did Zoom. I had, you know, my other job, I was with clients, so I was trying to dress up to be impressive. All right. Hey, um, our soulmates are awesome. Like, they always send us little messages and they look out. And, you know, I've been having headaches like almost every show. So someone wrote me today about how dangerous Red Bull is. And I had two the other day, and I've, I've not been able to shake this migraine for like two, three days, right? Um, didn't they say that was one of the things that Kevin Samuels did? Like he drank, he was known to drink a lot of Red Bulls. Oh, I'm, I'm not. I did hear something like that. Yeah, I'm not. I didn't keep up with nothing with that um horrible <laughs> ass man. May <laughs> his soul toss and turn in that grave. <laughs> Come on, cute. They had someone online showing like a the results of like a urine test where like all, they found all kinds of chemicals like uh no shade to rebel until we know for sure but i need to look i want to look into this i just want to know if y'all heard of this mm -hmm. are y'all oh i see you drinking something out what you drinking on tonight hey i'm having a cadillac margarita tonight oh, baby that's my go-to baby i like that can that's what you look like when you top it off and the extra and the grand Marnier. That's yeah. gonna be a Cadillac style, baby. I don't want I don't it. Want it. Well, you don't activate my throat right here in the middle part, baby. I don't, <laughs> oh, we don't need to get that throat activated. <laughs> we don't want to get that throat that. activated because we know the tricks it can turn. I don't got a little thirsty, honey. But listen, y'all right here worried about my throat being activated. I'm the only person sitting on this panel with a man. Okay. So some No, of you're the only wear... one talking and bragging about your man. Oh, girl, please. Right. Right. All. Girl, please. Girl, please. <laughs> it's not a holiday for some of us. But anyways, let's get into these topics. Candace Owens is offering to pay Carly Russell's eighteen thousand dollar fine. And she gives her an exclusive interview revealing her whereabouts during those forty eight hours. Okay. Do you think Carly Russell should take Take Candace up on this offer. Al, what do you think? Should she do it? Um, well, it depends on what it depends on what Carly Russell intentions are. I personally think that she should take the interview um, because this interview is going to live way longer than this story will. This story will be dead by the end of the year. Her hopes will be dead by the end of the year. It was epic, but it will definitely be buried behind some other psychotic trips or hopes that's going to definitely occur between now and Christmas. Now, if I were to take this interview, number one, I would ask for more money because you will be tarred and feathered by Candace Owen for an hour because she's going to she's going to come at you so hard because her intent is to break the Internet. Now, if Carly can't afford to pay back that $18,000 restitution, because we know if you can't pay it, the courts will garnish your wages. And if her mother put up her house to get her out of prison, it would then also be a lien against her mother's home. So she might want to get out from under some of that anxiety. So if that's her focus, but if her focus is to constantly, you know, to, to be more famous, but famous in a better way and change her branding, then it could help because it could explain the ridiculousness. And once you flush out the ridiculousness, the public in many ways can relate to it. But this is the scary part. I don't know if you guys have realized this. Candace Owens is herself going through a rebranding. She has softer topics. 
She's softened her approach and she's pivoted on her delivery. So if you listen to the last two weeks of Candace Owens talking, you're actually gonna find yourself agreeing with her. And what we call this in branding, well, I won't go into that, but, but do know this, she's doing this for a reason. And one of the reasons is that in my opinion, she's gonna seek political, political office soon in some state, if not the country. Well, Q, what do you think? Carly Russell people. Carly Russell people, if you think her ass was lost when she got missing the last us, she gonna lose her damn mind if she go on Candace Owens. She and her mama would be a damn fool to go on Candace Owens. Candace Owens cannot be trusted. She has no intention other to, than to embarrass this girl and then to leverage whatever information she has to make the black community look bad. Absolutely not. Now, if you going to do it, at least get six figures up out the woman because America's mind is kind of made up about you in this story anyway. But last but not least to Al's point, you know, if Carly Ross, let me tell you something. There is a Lifetime movie or a Hallmark movie in this, and I'm pretty sure you would make a hell of a lot more money selling your story to Lifetime or hell. Or Tubi. Or Tubi. I'm just going to say. Or oh, yeah, no. over there to Tubi. Over there to Tubi. And I can play Investigator Douglas, honey. I can, I can play. I can play. you be a mean old investigator. <laughs> but no, she should not go on Candace Owens. I agree with both of you. $18,000 is just to be even. You don't gain anything from that. You're going to gain a lot of embarrassment. Then Candace Owens' rabid fan base that are very anti-Black are going to definitely come for you, harass the crap out of you, and you're going to be like, oh, my God, you're going to need some money for therapy at that interview. And I don't think uh, if, if you just want to get your restitution paid or the fines paid, okay, but at what cost? At, at what cost? And I, I think both of you are right. I think that this story is definitely worth I think someone would pay for this story 1,000%. Um, and Candace Owens is not going to give you an empath em mm -hmm. empathetic... She's not gonna empathize empathize with you. It's gonna no. be negative, and you're gonna be in a bad place. I think she'd be better off going to the Breakfast Club. I agree. Like, I, like I, I just want here. You know, if, if she's looking for a big platform, or better yet, Robin Roberts and all of them had her mama. I mean, I guess it's not as big of a story now, but there are it's other places she could go. Hell, I mean, I could pay her airfare and, and her lodging for her to come do our show. <laughs> she don't have to go nowhere. Bingo, Al, you so smart. <laughs> Stephen Brown, let us get $18,000 to do this. Let us get a quick $20,000 and do this story on Fox. Okay. <laughs> All right, y'all, Drake has tied Michael Jackson as the male solo artist with the most number one songs in Billboard's Hot 100 history, and social media is not here for it. Someone wrote, Michael Jackson was not part of an era that belonged to streaming. His numbers were strictly sales. We have to really find a way to separate... The then from the now. Funky, let's go to you first. Do you agree? I 100% agree. Although, although I will say I think Drake is epic. I think Drake deserves all the things. I think Drake will go down as one of the best commercial rap artists. Don't ar argue with your mammy. I'm not here to dig into who is hip hop, he pop, lyricists. You cannot deny the fact that artists like Drake, Nicki Minaj, Chris Brown, they consistently put out hit after hit after hit after hit. But also being of the physical album purchasing generation with the CD book, going into the store, having the artist sign your album, being a part of that generation, and also having one foot into the internet generation, it isn't the same. It isn't the same. The numbers, uh, you know, you know, the numbers that these artists put up now versus what Michael and Madonna and those people were doing back then, worldwide tours, millions and millions of album sales with no internet. With no internet, we're talking about going in music stores, shaking hands, signing. It ain't the same, baby. It is not the same. No access to the song either. Having to wait for them to come on the radio, call your radio DJ up, tell them, oh, can you play my favorite song? It is not the same. All right, Al, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. So, Claudia, you know now, in order for it to equal one album sale from back in the day, all you have to stream is 1,500. 
right? You only have to stream 1,500 songs or however that, that works in streaming to equal one album sale. So that is where I feel the rub exists because I don't think that they, they equal the same. Like Q said, we're talking about days where people had to buy records, cassette tapes, eight tracks and CDs in order to get that number to count. And that number meant that you had to you had to create an environment and a relationship with your consumer in a whole different way, which means you had to create music in a whole different way in order to post the numbers that someone like a Michael Jackson or someone like an Elvis or someone like a Tina Turner had. And it's just not the same. Now access is easy. The ability to, to be in contact with the artist is easy and the, the ability to consume their music is so much easier. So I don't think that strictly said sales and streaming numbers should ever be directly correlated. Um, I, our dog said streaming reaches way more people. Stop talking about what has been talked to me about now. And Tamari uh, Harding says, exactly. People had to go to a store and purchase music. Drake is definitely a hip hop superstar though. I agree with both of you. Uh, the effort is just not the same. I feel like they should have a different kind of um, uh, counting like a uh, record system now. Like it kind of stopped when records stopped being a thing. And now it's a whole new different, you know, kind of compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. Cause it's so, it won't be disrespectful to those in the past. And we don't have that same era anymore. It's a different count, a different system. So I think maybe it should be two different kind of uh, categories, I, I would think. Right. So yeah, uh, yeah that's, I, I agree with you guys both. All right. Boosie shared his thoughts on a rite of passage for 16 year olds. Watch this clip of the Danza project. I don't want to put him in an area where they're like, no, there's actually more than two genders. And they're going to try to convince him to believe this lie that isn't true. Right, right. You know what I mean? And that's up to a father to do that. You know, as a father, we got to be more hands-on. We got to be more hands-on with raising our kids and letting them know what's right. By the time they're 16, you got to be pushing people. You got to be pushing pussy. When they're 15, you got to start sending them to the movies <laughs> with the girl. All right, what do you have to say about this, Al? That man's ridiculousness. Y'all know I keep saying this over and over. To me, Bootsy is Bootsy, Bootsy, whatever his name is, is reality TV gold. I think someone, and if you mark my words, remember I told you here, within the six, next six months, Bootsy will have a reality television and he'll have that reality television show because of this ridiculousness that he's constantly preaching. He is in full stride with his brand. He understands his brand and he makes sure every interview that he does, he says something that is really a reach and he knows it's a reach because he has kids that are in the LBGTQ plus community to create more conversation in the community that he serves and the people that listen to him. This hyper masculinity behavior though, for me, I find is absolutely way too much. Personally, that's for me, but I do like the fact that Bootsy does preach being there, being present with his kids during those years between the ages of 14 and 17. I think that's pivotal. Cooking bitch 123 says, why do people keep asking Bootsy questions? He's weird. Okay, Q, what do you have to say about what he had to say? Al, you give him absolutely too much credit. I don't even think Boosie has an understanding of what a brand is, period. I think this is truly what he thinks, and it's just sheer street or poverty-stricken ignorance. Um, you know what I'm saying? If it's good for the goose, it must be good for the gander. You know, you just say, yeah, he has a child in the LGBTQ community, but it's a girl. And we, we know historically that black men and black men who are homophobic or just men, period, tend to be more all right with women being lesbian. But the attacks always come on the men. I'd be curious to know. You know, would you have that same advice for your 15 year old daughter? Would you you want to push P on them at 15 or would you push D on them? Your daughter at 15, you're saying send them to the movies with the girls. But then does that apply to your daughter? Do you want somebody to send their son to the movie with your daughter so that she can be the person that they're knocking off? It just troubles me because you're right. Hyper masculinity and all the other things that are out here killing black men. Y'all are so worried about them being damn gay. Y'all are so damn worried about them being exposed to the notion that sexuality is a spectrum or that may possibly be more than one gender. You know, whether you believe it or not, that's fine and well, but at least educate 
yourself to the point to know that attraction is not based on exposure. All right. If that, I was not exposed to anything gay, I grew up in a, I'm an eighties baby. I, I grew up in the inner city, Miami. Everybody was homophobic and somehow or another, I still managed to turn out to be gay. And I had my daddy in my life. So please explain it. It's not, you don't become gay through osmosis. All right. You don't become gay through exposure. You don't become gay through obtaining knowledge about gay stuff. You're just gay because the Lord made you that way. You were born that doggone way. And I, and I, I, I wish Boosie would move on from this topic. And it, it, it really, at first, it was a joke for me when I'd be like, oh, you know, he must be fighting something or something must have happened to him. But I can say this. I, Quentin Antoine Latham, unequivocally believe that either Bootsy was touched or harmed by someone in a homosexual manner, or he sees something in a gay man that he hates in himself. And that is why he is always writing this topic. I'm going to say this. I know what you just said about, you know, if it was a girl, be different with, and with black men. And that's usually the case. But in this case, I think Boosie hates his gay daughter equally because he kicked her out. He had definitely showed her, to me, in my opinion, showed her no grace and no special treatment. I just think he gets a lot of attention when he says these things. Look at us covering him once again. I never spoke so much about Boosie until he started doing this. Like he became trending every single week. We're talking about it. We're so outraged and stuff. It's not outrageous anymore. It's just who he is. That's what he talks about. Doesn't he have a gay assistant? I don't His know. His personal assistant is gay. That meant virtual. <laughs> okay. And and, and 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 the gays are always fine, just as long as we're being somebody's tool, tool or instrument. But child, we got to go to break anyway. Enough of boosting. All right. Well, coming up next, find out what makes Benzino uncomfortable, and later bow out in the sick and tired of new music artists. Keep it here. We'll find out all about it when we get back. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. You're not gonna get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff, like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. You did Why? not just tell me about the word Riz. Riz? <laughs> oh, I gave man. you all free Riz. <laughs> McMillan and Mara. When you wanna meet a woman or meet a guy, Say something about the space yeah. and see how they respond. Every Thursday. Because if the person can't respond to an observation about the space that's clear, you're talking to a dummy or someone you might take home, but not to your mama. And you know what I'm saying? This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain, they're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Welcome back to TJF. Shout out to all the soulmates in the chat. Please hit that like button. We see y'all supporting the show. All right, y'all, in a recent interview, Benzino shared that although he has nothing against the LBGTQ plus community, he cannot sit across from a transgender person and feel comfortable. Oh, my God. Really? Do you think Benzino needs to mind his business? And why do we need to know this? Why do we need to know this? Okay, that's your business. Um, what if people said, I don't want to sit, sit across from someone with no neck? I mean, who cares? Why are you saying this? Q, what do you think about this? Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute. You know 
Yes, Benzino need to mind his business. And you know what else he need to stop doing or what he shouldn't have did? He shouldn't have told man. You know, I'm finna fix his ass. Because I don't know if y'all remember that episode of the Love and Hip Hop live thing where me and Jocelyn so-called got into it. And she was like, Boy, I, even, I know what you do on Peter Street, and I know what you do in the bathroom with Benzino. I know what you do in the bathroom. Everybody was like, fuck it, I didn't even, what was you doing in the bathroom with Benzino? Cocaine. And I'm going to tell you what the problem is, too. And the issue that I had, the cocaine was Benzino's. Okay? this I, I, I've been mad about this SHIT for years. All right? We was down to the blue flame in Atlanta. We was down to the blue flame. And I forgot how it came up. But somehow or another, it came up, and Benzino said he was going to call his guy to get it. And we was drinking and carrying on. So I was like, you know, Benzino, where is your guy at? You know, where is your guy at? Where is your guy at? He was asking him out throughout the night. Finally, his guy came and brought it, and we both was in the bathroom. at the, Now, this back in the day, don't judge me from my past, because I don't stay there no more. But we both was down there in that naked bar snorting that co cocaine. It wasn't even all that damn good either, okay? And this is the this, this part that pissed me off. Me and you don't did something together at Friday. Me and you. How it make it on the love and hip hop screen? Now, how you gonna go over there and tell Jocelyn and Mimi and all them what I was doing and we was in there doing it together? It was your person. Now, see, this is a, this, 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 I could have spared you, Biz, you know. I could have spared you, but I've I been mad with you ever since you damn did that because I couldn't understand how something you initiated you gonna go spray and make me look like I was the only one in there snorting it. Now, as far as that's concerned, if you that damn shady, then that stuff, them tweets between you and Shauna Brooks, I don't know. I, I, I laid out that story to lay out Benzino character. And now you saying you don't want to sit across from the trans because of the experience that you had with Shauna Brooks and saying that it's automatically assumable that if a straight man is with a transgender and their people are going to assume they had sex. Baby, we saw them text messages between you and Shauna Brooks. We saw them and we heard some of that conversation and we heard some of that rebuttal. And I don't know, Benz, you know, it's giving shady business practices the same way it was when me and you was in that bathroom at the Blue Flame in Atlanta doing that cocaine. Do we need to say allegedly here? No, that's my story. We did it together. So we have a witness. We got a participant. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> Come on, brand strategies. I'm trying my best. I, I I'm trying my best. Okay, I'm going to pivot. Let me let me share a personal story. So when I read the story, I was in the next room. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm gonna, please, I'm please, don't fire, please don't fire Al. I didn't even know Al. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you so great. <laughs> you. I'm going to share a story, and this is going to, I'm just being vulnerable, and I'm being real, and I'm being honest. Oh, um, uh, Al, real quick, C Cali Girl Shay said, okay, Quentin Pinkett Smith. Sorry, I just thought that was funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry to interrupt you. I'm sorry that the, this is coming from this messenger, but but when I first started understanding and, 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 and experiencing transgender women, I felt exactly like Benzino. They made me extremely nervous. They made me extremely uncomfortable. I, let's not say extremely, but they made me nervous and they made me uncomfortable. And if it was my druthers, I would not want them to be so physically close to me. Of course, that was years ago. And it had nothing to do with whether they were going to out me or anything. It had to do with me psychologically trying to understand what it meant. Because for me, when it comes to sexual attraction or when it comes to relationships, I always wanted, like for women, I always wanted to conquer women. I always wanted to, you know, figure them out and conquer them. And as it relates to my attraction to men, because I was attracted to them, I always wanted to figure them out and I wanted to conquer them. That's just kind of how I'm wired. So when there was a transgender woman or even a cross-dressing woman, or I don't know what you call those, if you call them women or not, or even if there was a person in drag they made me uncomfortable because psychologically, I didn't know what I was to do with that information in my head. Because in both genders, male and female, all I wanted to do was conquer. In these situations, I was confused and it made me uncomfortable. 
I and thank you for that being honest. I know that's hard to do these days because it's always a fear of a cancellation and offending someone. Like offending people is the worst thing you could do in the world. Which I mean, growing up, that's kind of like was part of growing up. I will say this, um, Benzino, you're entitled to your opinion and, and your feelings. I just think it's a weird t- time to say it, especially when you've actually claimed. You know, you've said that you've actually Shauna. I think you said was didn't Shana, he say that him and Shauna were really good friends? Like they had a legit friendship, didn't they? I'm um, funky. Uh, I, 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 no, think I think they, they worked on a movie. He tried uh, to. Yeah, they worked on a movie or something movie. together. You know, and she what I'm had saying? to do an event at one of his restaurants or something so like that. That's what. Well, that's his were, yeah. Well, I mean, well, I think they were as far as many. And I and and I, I will now. Here is what I will say about Benzino and about his character. When he was with Thiefy, I've hung out with Benzino several times. Benzino was cool with the gays. It was never an issue. It was never like. Oh, you gay? I can't be seen with you. I can't. It, it was never a non. It, it was never an issue. He really is a cool guy. He he, he really is a cool guy. And, and as far as me having an attitude with him, I really ain't got an attitude. But it's just I just had to get his ass back. Um, but he, he so really, how are you gonna spray him for ten minutes straight and then be like, well, he, <laughs> well, but he's cool. Well, all, all my business, all my business was on love and hip hop, and I ain't even make no damn money off. It. I wasn't even no damn cast member, okay? And <laughs> had to um, equip Jocelyn Hernandez with a bullet to shoot me on live television, and I was completely caught off guard. Oh, I was so caught off guard that girl knew all my business and had sprayed it on the TV. Damn. Five. I haven't seen it. I have to go back and see this. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Put the link in our group chat because I did not know about any of this. Well, if we're not here tomorrow, it's been nice knowing y'all and it's fun. To- <laughs> Check out this sad story. A 24 24- Hold on, Claudia, before you move on. We got one comment that said, Trav Brown said, Benzino just scared if he hit that powder too hard around the trans. He might spread it wide and lay it low. <laughs> this shit gonna be on all the blogs tomorrow. <laughs> gotcha. Got him. <laughs> Next today, Claudia. <laughs> I miss being on Deal or No Deal. <laughs> it wasn't me really done. Hey y'all, this is our farewell show. <laughs> hey, check out this sad story. A 24-year-old mugshot is going viral because of how badly police officers beat him. McKenna Woods was arrested as a drug suspect and allegedly resisting arrest, even after being zapped with a stun gun. Police officers repeatedly punch elbowed and need him, causing severe injuries to his face and body. Do you think this was necessary, Al? Absolutely not. We know that this is not necessary unless you are armed and dangerous, unless you have a knife, a gun or something that could possibly hurt or bodily injure those officers. There's no reason in the world for you to use this type of excessive force. But what we've learned is that this Jacksonville Sheriff Office, the police chief, believes that it was an excessive force and that when it comes to violence, that things get ugly. So he put the officers back on the street because he said that's where they belong in order to protect the citizens of Jacksonville. Now, the good thing is that the depart- the family has reached out to the Department of Justice and asked for an internal, an internal review of not only this sheriff, but also this department, but also this police chief, because they believed that not only was it excessive, but also it was unnecessary. Um, And I totally agree. And in my opinion, when you show that picture one more time production, where is the outrage? Where is the outrage? I want to know where is the outrage? Where is the outrage from these these communities? Where are the outrage from the black community? Where are the outrage from the Jacksonville citizens? Now, he may have been a drug dealer, but he wasn't out there killing anyone. Allegedly, you know what I mean? Like this is almost beating a person, beating a person to a pulp is borderline beating them to death like Rodney King. And we saw how L.A. didn't stand for that stuff and they rioted. All right. Thank you very much for that. Q, what do you think? You know what? It's it's unfortunate because there is no outrage and there will not be any because America has done such a good job of vilifying black men and in particular vilifying black men that has his aesthetic 
You know what I'm saying? America sends messages that black men that have his aesthetic are dangerous. They're menaces to society. They're drug dealers in, in the event that he happens to be. And they're not worthy of compassion. He is the poster child, of, as far as America is concerned, of all things wrong with America and all things criminal. You know, but we do know that the police has the ability to bring down people without harming them. Look at the story we did yesterday when the lady should have been damn shot. The, the, the lady in the airport, when she had a knife and stabbed three people, including a police officer who tried to mace her in the Atlanta airport. So it is possible. And lastly, I'll say this. I, in the last couple of years, and as, as recently as in the last 45 days, have come in contact with people who are new police officers, recently graduated. And it disgusts me when hearing them talk about like their first days on the job, they were so excited about having to get physical with someone. Like I, I sit back and these people, you know, like, oh man, you know, I, I, I had to put a gun in somebody's face the other day, man. Let me tell you about it. And then, you know, th th this one particular person I know that recently graduated, he's like, you know, yeah, you know, man, I had to slam somebody down on the ground the other day. And it was like, this rush that they get from being these pseudo power rangers or these pseudo superheroes that they think it, that's in their mind. I'm not justifying it and not saying it's right, but I think that these police officers, when they get in the heat of battle and they get on top of somebody, there's a psychosis that comes over them and they get in this beat them up, family, keep beating them up until they stop moving. And again, not excusing it, but I think, you know, maybe they don't even realize what they're doing until the person stops moving. I, I, I don't know, but it's as if they get a high out of these opportunities they get to get physical with the people. It makes them feel like men. It makes them feel like they're really doing their job or something. And we, we, we've we got to find, find a solution to this. I agree with you. I think two things, again, can be true at the same time. Yes, it is excessive, and it does seem like they, they get a literal hard on for, yes, it's my time. I get to beat one of these M-words down. Because when I say M-words, because I don't see the same energy when it's a white suspect. I mean, I really don't. And listen, sometimes some of our people, and I'm about to go ahead and uh, go on a limb and say this, sometimes we got some wicked criminals in our community that do deserve it. And I'm okay with that. I would be really okay with it if you kept the same energy for the equivalent of the same type of criminal in the white community. If you were doing the same excessive force things to them as you do to us, it'd be a little less easy for us to say, oh, racism. And then on the other side, speaking to, my, to my people in my community, Black folks, let's stop giving them a reason. Black people, stop selling poison to your community. Stop raping each other. Stop killing each other. Stop stealing from each other. Stop giving them an excuse and a reason to go do this to you. Because it is really hard to march for a goon. It is really hard to march with someone that's killing their own mom or killing someone at that, that you know, in their family or in their block over some nonsense. So, like, I think work needs to be done on both sides. And, uh, yeah, I, I, we know that these police officers are, like, looking for that. They think it's a video game. There's no humanity when it comes to us. So do everything we can do to not give them a reason. Um, J.M. Edwards said, outrage and protesting have, got, have proven not to work. Here's a novel idea. Don't sell drugs. Okay. All right, coming up next, why Bow Wow is sick and tired of new music artists. And later, find out what we would do in crazy situations. Stay close. We'll be right back. You did why? not just tell me about the word Riz. Riz? <laughs> oh, I man. gave y'all free Riz. McMillan and Mara. When you want to meet a woman or meet a guy... Say something about the space yeah. and see how they respond. Every Thursday. Because if the person can't respond to an observation about the space that's clear, you talking to a dummy or someone you might take home, but not to your mama. And you know what I'm saying. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, My kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Worried about your friend but don't know how to reach out? 
can say how are you or get a fake tattoo you can ask with an app if it works for you you can chat with them in vr it's so good if you think you should check in yeah you should reach out to a friend about their mental health learn how you can help at seize the awkward.org tgif Al and I battle of the cleavage. Who got the sluttiest <laughs> turn on tonight? I say Al wins. Live and interactive. Her <laughs> girl said, Claudia's showing us her white side today. Coming to work with the wet hair. No, I had to do a <laughs> test in a pool today. Serving up all the tea. Tell me how's the dating life going? It's going. Going to the next thing. <laughs> How the phones want to know? I'm oh, like, no. Oprah and Stedman, y'all will never get my real business. So. <laughs> on Fox Soul. Welcome back to TGIF. Boy, do we have a hot show tonight. Y'all make sure you hit that like button in the chat because uh, we're giving it to you. All right, we're going to give you some tips also how to save money and sleep better at night. So listen, I love that feeling of waking up in the morning completely refreshed and ready to take on the day. But if you're a hot sleeper, it might not always be like that. So if you're more in the camp of waking up like a sticky, sweaty mess, you're not alone. If that sounds familiar, GhostBed is here for you. As the makers of the coolest beds in the world, GhostBed is your go-to for cooling mattresses, cooling pillows, and even cooling bedding. From their signature ghost ice fabric to patented technology that adjusts with your body temperature, every GhostBed mattress is designed with cooling in mind. Now, whether you want a plusher mattress that cushions your shoulders and hips with a firmer option with exceptional support, your ghost bed will keep you cool and comfortable all night long. Now, for a limited time, our listeners can get 50% off all ghost bed mattresses, adjustable bases, and frames, pillows, sheets, and more. 50% off site-wide. Limited time only. Now, go ahead and use promo code T at ghostbed.com slash T to take advantage of this amazing offer. That's www.ghostbed.com slash T with promo code T. Promotional consideration is furnished by GhostBed. Fellas, I know y'all love y'all GhostBed products. Anyone care to share? Yeah, you know, I say this all the time. I'm a warm-blooded Southern man, and anything that has a cooling effect works better for me in bed. It works better for me when it comes to snoring, and it also works better for me when it comes to headaches. And not only have I tried the pillow, but I've also tried the pillow, I mean, the um, sheets, and and when I'm telling you, it just gives me a all around better sleep experience with the cooling effect that all these products have. All right, Q. You know, it's, it's funny because I've never spoken to the, the cooling effect. The other day, you know how sometimes your pillowcase may slide off the edge of the pillow, leaving your raw pillowcase exposed. Well, I happened to be laying in the bed. My pillowcase had slid down and the back of my neck had hit that ghost bed pillow. That pillow was so doggone cold. I thought I had waste some water or something in my bed. I was like, what's that? Then when I reached back, it was the pillow. And so, you know, Al always speaks to the cooling effect, guys. And it really, I don't know how you engineer something that's made of fabric and fluff and foam to be as cool as that pillow is, but that cooling effect is second to none. All right. Thank you so much. Once again, promotion consideration furnished by GhostBed. Let's get back to some more topics. All right, y'all take a look at Bad Wow's recent tweet. Can we please bring back artist development at these labels? Do these labels even care about these artists? Y'all be throwing them on platforms knowing they're not ready. A boxer is trained and taught before battle. We just keep throwing these subpar bleep artists out here with no proper teaching. What do you think has ticked Bow Wow off, Al? What do you think about this? And is he right? I think he's probably ticked off because you have people like Ice Spice, Sexy Red, and, and Blueface. All these people are, don't have to put in as much work as that young man did in order to be a superstar. And these people have jumped the line and they're more famous with more followers. This is the deal. It would make sense if artist development didn't exist. The deal or the argument that you should be making, Little Bow Wow, is that artist development should come back in funding more for the urban genre with the big record labels. The record labels definitely have artist development. That's how Harry, was his name, Harry Skiles or whatever his name is, that's, that's how he is such a big star. In different genres, different record labels, a lot more money for artist development. Unfortunately, in the urban music space, 
they don't have to because it doesn't take a lot for us as consumers to uptake their ridiculousness. They don't have to be talented. They don't have to know how to dance, sing, and all of that anymore. They just have to be ridiculous. So there you have it. It's a reason that artist development doesn't exist, doesn't exist as well or get funded as other genres in the record labels. That's very true, especially as long as we have social media that a lot of Black people are the reason behind a lot of successful social media apps, and yet they still manage to shadow ban us, edit our content, censor our content more than any other demographic on the planet. Anyways, Q, what do you think about this? You know, Al basically summed it up, you know, and I'll just add to it that artist development, especially in the urban genre, just doesn't make sense because you these people are not artists, they're products. And the label wants to keep the overhead on the product as low as possible so they can make the maximum return on their investment. And if people are going to buy the product, in this instance, consume the music mm. as cheaply as it's being presented, if I'm one of the bean counters in the accounting office looking at the spreadsheet, I'm going to say, why are we spending money on dance classes on Sexy Red if they're going to buy it anyway? Why are we spending money on vocal coaching on Sexy Red if they're going to buy it anyway? Why are we spending money on makeup and styling on Sexy Red if they're going to buy it anyway? Let's maximize our profits and let's zero fund all these other things that is costing this money. Screw her being an artist. We're just trying to sell a cheap product to make the most money. From a business perspective, it 100% makes sense. From an arts perspective, it's horrible. To Bow Wow's credit, I would like to see artist development come back in both, you know, rap and R&B. But as long, to your point, Claudia, as we continue to consume it, then there's no reason for them to serve it. That's right. Uh, our love 144 says, older artists just need to realize that this is a new microwave generation. Times change 1000%. I mean, again, you use Sexy Red as an example, so I'll just piggyback off of, the, off of that. Sexy Red blew up from one thing. The line my pea pink, my booty hole brown. And that made everybody go, what? And we all shared that on social media. Like, this is so ridiculous. And never in a million years would I think that that would have materialized the way it did, but it did. And within six months of that line on social media, she has featured, she's featured with Drake. She's, uh, she's on tour with Drake, songs with Nicki Minaj. So why would you, that they, they clearly spent zero money on artist development. <laughs> and so I get it. If your bottom line is money, then I, I understand why they wouldn't do it. All right, keep it live because coming up next, find out what we would do in crazy situations. And later, what's the real reason a man won't post his girlfriend? Hmm, I know, we'll be right back. Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. G-I-F. Al and I, Battle of the Cleavage, who got the sluttiest turn on tonight. I say Al wins. Live and interactive. Her over girl said, Claudia's showing us her white side today. Coming to work with the wet hair. No, I had to do a pest in a pool today. Serving up all the tea. Funky, <laughs> how's the dating life going? It's going. Going to the next thing. <laughs> the phones want to know. I'm oh, like, no. Oprah and y'all will never get my real business, so. <laughs> on Fox Soul. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation 
to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to the show. All right, soulmates, have y'all ever thought about how you'd handle yourselves if you were placed in the middle of unexpected situations? Well, we'd like for y'all to chime in the chat in a fun segment we call hashtag WWYD. What would you do? All right, y'all, we want to hear you in the chat. A woman is complaining after her friend charged all of her guests $20 to attend her baby shower. Now, if a friend was charging to cover a cover to get into a baby shower, what would you do, Al? So I just want to be very clear. After I read the story, it says she charged $20 for a gender reveal. So this isn't the baby shower, because we know at baby showers, it's traditional to bring a gift. And what you do at baby showers, now, if she said this was the baby shower, and in lieu of bringing a gift, you paid $20, I'm here for it. But in this particular case, you're paying $20, which I view as a door fee for the gender reveal. Now, I don't know traditionally, Claudia, you have to tell me, when you go to gender reveals, it's not like you bring a gift because you don't know the you don't know the sex of the child. So as it relates for gender reveals, don't charge me. Don't charge me a door fee to come to a gender reveal, <laughs> but to come to a baby shower, I'll definitely pay a $20 fee in lieu of a gift. Hell yeah, because those baby gifts and all the friends that you have baby shower gifts for, I would like to pay it. In this particular case, she's saying in lieu of a gift, she's going to charge $20 to come to her baby reveal. Now, as far as me, you got gender reveal, baby shower, bachelorette party, family tea, and wedding. That's five different occasions that you have to come up with money for a gift for a friend who's getting married. That's a lot. So charging me for a gender reveal, no ma'am. All right, I hear you, Al. Uh, Q, what would you do? Well, and Al, you left off the sip and see too, so that's six. Well, that might be, the, the sip and tea might be what people call the, like the family tea. The family tea, okay. Yeah. Um, hell no, hell no, this is tacky as hell. This is tacky as hell. A gender reveal, first of all, <laughs> I, I haven't been to a gender reveal. That's not something that people who who were getting pregnant around when my age bracket of people were getting pregnant was doing. Um, I'm at the age now where like my female friends are at the the losing end of the having baby thing. They ain't really doing it now. I, 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 nobody, first of all, I, I first of all, I'm not even going to nobody in my age bracket's gender reveal. That's just not, I wasn't raised on gender. Claudia, you better not have no gender reveal. I would not uh, be. I mean, if I could get pregnant. <laughs> I, I would not be at a gender reveal. But charging people $20 for some extra unnecessary ass party, I think it's a bunch of BS. It, 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 this is tacky. You should not have it. When you have this type of celebratory festivals and you want people to put on their good clothes and, 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 forego their time with their children and their family to come hang out with you, you need to provide the sodas and the cookies and the charcuterie you, and the you, wine and everything. Huh? They need to do a plate. Yeah, they need to sell a plate. Well, 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 well <laughs> essentially, <laughs> but see, what you're supposed to do, Al, the people that are participating in the event, they're not supposed to know that that's what you had those sold the plates for if this is what you will be selling plates for. But you just don't need to have it. <laughs> You know, to me, this is just one more example of people doing things for the gram. If you don't have money for a gender reveal, just say it and just don't have one. Yeah, you just have your baby shower. Yeah. Right. Like, I think it's, it's extremely tacky. You're charging <laughs> me for you to tell me what sex your baby is. So then I then know what gifts to go buy go your buy. baby. Two or three months gonna, later. Get the hell out of here with that nonsense. <laughs> uh, I think people are getting so caught up in the dropping balloons and explosions with blue or pink. This is dumb as hell. I'm sick of it. <laughs> and I wish I would pay to go to someone's gender reveal. Girl, just tell me what you're having so I can go to Target and go get you $200 worth of baby gifts. Like, no, it's not happening. So what I would do, I'm not paying. Okay. Uh, the, the fat hippie says, I guess it's like people who have money boxes at their weddings. Can't get off my lap. No, I mean, it's not It's not like the money box at a wedding. Because the money box at the wedding, I get that. Because sometimes you don't bring a gift. You want to give them something for the honeymoon or to get started. It's a little different, in my opinion, than the money box. for the. I don't mind the money box for the wedding. Okay. A man went up against a kangaroo to save his dog. Who knew kangaroos were this strong? Watch this clip. Look at my dog. <laughs> I 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you do if a kangaroo squared up? This kangaroo was like cock diesel, like he just did a bid. Right. You. I know you would probably shoot the out of him. But well, if I didn't have if I didn't have my pistol, I would have said a little prayer for Fido. Because I, first of all, I'm not, I'm not too worried about an alligator eating it out of me in that murky water. And then you know, kangaroos guys, they have long like claws, like and, you know, and they're stronger. That thing could really lacerate you and hurt you really badly. So if it's between me and that dog, I just have to see that dog on the other side. <laughs> so you know, oh, no. the deal with a kangaroo is not their claws, Q. The deal with the kangaroo is that they have a punching force of 275 pounds. In addition to a punching force of 275 pounds, kangaroos have this um, infinity of drowning its victims. So it's very quick to grab you with their hands because we have known scientists have said that they have a handedness that is only exhibited by humans, but they have a handedness that will grab you, dunk you under the water, and will drown you, and possibly use what's called their their tail, which is described as their fifth leg, to assault you and hold you under the water and drown you. Poor Fido would have to drown if it was up to me to go up against a kangaroo to save him. Nikki Knight says the kangaroo is built like Shannon Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> with the funeral makeup or without it. <laughs> An elderly man pulled out an odd weapon during a road rage incident. Let's take a look. Somebody call the What? What would you do in this situation? Was that like a Wolverine hand cue? What was that? It's something like that. And what I would have did, me and my friends would have jumped the S-H-I-T out of him. Ain't no old man finna run up on us like that. And listen, you could tell the fact that he got that in his car suggests to me that you leave your house looking for problems because ain't nobody riding around with no medieval times weapon like that in their car all willy-nilly. Al, what would you do if you saw an old man bust out the hand? <laughs> what would I do? Uh... Relate, because <laughs> I told you I had a bad case of road rage, and in my mind, I did think about taking things that would like help me intimidate the people that I had road rage with. So I do get it, but this young man, this old man, better watch out because I've shared on the show before. If you carry and then banish a weapon or a sword or something like this more than four inches, depending on the state, you can be charged an additional assault felony. All right, y'all, coming up. Sorry, my cat is like making my screen move. Coming up, find out the real reason why men don't post their girlfriends. That's next. We'll be right back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. You did what? not just tell me about the word Riz. Riz? <laughs> Oh, I gave y'all free riz. <laughs> McMillan and Mara. When you want to meet a woman or meet a guy, say something about the space. Yeah. And see how they respond. Every Thursday. Because if the person can't respond to an observation about the space that's clear, you talking to a dummy. Or someone you might take home, but not to your mama. And you know what I'm saying. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The Sisterhood of Women in Tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change.
There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back to the show. Don't forget to hit that like button for us one time. All right, y'all, Britney Spears recently revealed that she got pregnant during her relationship with Justin Timberlake. She claims neither of them was ready for a child at the time, so she got an abortion. What do you think about this story, Q? Everybody between the ages of 16 and 40 had an abortion, okay? I'm, listen, I'm just glad somebody else telling some business other than goddamn Jada, Jada, Jada Pinkett Smith. Um, and you know what? For whatever reason, we might not be interested in what Jada and Will got going on, but I'm like, you know what, Brittany? I'm ready for what all Brittany about to start spilling, and I'm sure Al would agree. I think it's about to start coming. I think maybe she about to start building us up to a memoir or something, but I am, this is somebody, I want to know what she got to say and what all she done been through in the industry in her 25 plus years in the game. Do you think you feel like that because she hasn't really said that much? Yes, yes, I, I, I do, but because she's been locked away for so long. Like she peaked and then she got locked away. That girl got a lot to say. She's been through a lot of things we didn't even know. Now, granted, I'm not surprised. I mean, like I said, when you couple off people that young and they hunching and carrying on, who hasn't had an abortion or two between the ages of 16 and 40? Um, but yeah, I, I love it. Okay, Al, what do you think about this? Well, it's <laughs> I'm just sick of this type of stuff. I, I am nosy like you. I do want to see all this. We all know that uh, Britney Spears got a $15 million advance for her memoir. Her memoir is dropping next Thursday, oh. October the 24th. So this is to be expected. We're going to hear from now until the and, and I'm sorry if I said Thursday. I'm not sure if October the 24th is Thursday. Please check because it seems like people get really riled up when I when I <laughs> misquote something. But October the 24th, her, her book is to drop her memoir, like you said. Um, I think this will be a blockbuster, unlike Jada Pickett Smith's and I think people can't wait to hear it but we're going to hear this type of story leak every day even if not once or twice all the way until October 25th so brace yourself and be prepared Katie Pop 3 says not me girl no abortion mm -hmm. over here and uh, they said also Brittany did not grow up believing abortions and said that the decision haunted her for years that's pretty bold to talk about it but okay Katie we'll you didn't have one because you probably was ugly and couldn't get laid <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. Katie, I love you, girl. We just playing Katie. Hey, Katie, girl. <laughs> uh, hey, real quick, I just want to clarify when I talked about the Red Bull thing earlier, I didn't mean to in imply that that definitely is my cause of headaches. I don't know what it is. It could be my stress or because I cried yesterday. So I just want to like not put Red Bull specifically on blast. It could be a, a number of things out there. Why and are Red you Bull crying? <laughs> Why are you crying? Oh, uh, I... <laughs> no, no, no. What did you say? I didn't she hear you. No man. <laughs> Stop it, Q. Because you ain't had a man for 40 years and all of a sudden. Right, but that's all right. Talk about that. Talk yeah, about that. Yeah, okay. They're, they're done. They're uh, done. done. A friend of mine, um, just, uh, I got let down by someone that I really cared about that was a friend that uh, kind of, and I just felt like it's really easy for some people to just say whatever to my um, friendship and kind of discard me very easily. And I think I just value people a lot more than they value me in their lives. Yeah, so okay. it, it, so it, do you it, have this, does this happen a lot or something? Because we're of an age, we have a certain age now that I scan, well, for me, we've experienced that so much, especially you, I can imagine, because you're in the entertainment business for 20 plus years. Do you still, you must still have thin skin in that space? Is that why it still affects you the same? Maybe, maybe I have thin skin or I, I think I just believe in people too much. Like I'd be like, well, I, I feel like if I've been there for you, um, I should have some kind of currency with you that I shouldn't be so easy to just throw away. Like all the good. Yeah, but does this happen a lot? Have you experienced uh, this? Uh, yeah, I, I, enough, enough where it, it, it definitely is, um, I do have a little PTSD over it about but being a long, yeah, now that but makes a long time frame. Yeah, now that was a friend sense. that I spoke to many, many times a day that I still actually really have oh, a lot of. Oh, how long was how long was the relationship? Years. 
Yeah, yeah, it like, sucks. And, and then just being like one thing, like one misunderstanding, you could just be like, all right, bye. And I'm just like, without a conversation to even yeah. like clear things up. So I, I, I'm i a person that can pretty much, we can have a big fight. And now that we can, I've been said on some of my people I've gotten beef with on reality TV, I'll sit down with them and talk about it. Mm-hmm. So if someone I think that we have love, we should be able to talk about it. And I'm still holding out hope. All right, y'all. Uh, I want to thank Al and Funky for doing an amazing job. And hopefully this isn't a flash. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Crockett's Corner, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Also, check me out. I'll be on the Daily Blast tomorrow. Uh, oh, I like this like show. show. Yeah, thank you. So everyone check that out tomorrow. All right, y'all. Bye, y'all. See you tomorrow. That's always.